Hi, my name is David Greco, and today I just want to share uh, with you um, some of the words that Paul uh, gives us in Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, this is a man that was caught up to paradise, where he received directly from Jesus Christ uh, the revelation of the gospel. He says uh, that his gospel was not... Uh, given to him. He didn't receive the gospel from men, but he received it from Jesus Christ. And uh, he does talk about an experience, w whether in the body or out of the body, where he heard uh, words that were not allowed to be spoken. And um, this is the revelation that he, sh he shares in, in the book of Ephesians, Colossians, Philippians. Specifically in chapter 1, he, he talks about, uh, beginning with chapter th uh, verse 13, 14, 15, 16, all the way to, to the end of the first chapter, how um, he, he is praying through the Spirit. Uh, he's praying for the, for the church in Ephesus that they may be able to see, actually see with, their, with the eyes of their mind, that they would see... Uh, a couple of things. Uh, they would see the hope of their calling. They would see the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints. And then that, that they would be able to see and experience the power. He talks about the exceeding greatness of his power. And I just wanted to, to share uh, what, what uh, verse 9, 119 talk, says about the power of God and how it was manifested, not only in Jesus, but in us. Verse 19 says, And what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe according to the working of His mighty power, which He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at the right hand of God in the heavenly places? This is where Paul uses very, very specific words to define the power of God. He says, and what is the exceeding? The, 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 the exceeding means way over, hyper, um, the hyper measure of the greatness of his power. And the first word he uses for power is the word dunamis, which means inherit, inherent power. God has inherent power that belongs to him and only to him that on, that is only his power uh, because it has to do with his character and his attributes I mean how how great is God's inherent power well as great as he is so he t it, the first thing it, that he wants us to see is the greatness of his inherent dunamis or ability ability towards us it's directed toward us. It's meant for us. But it says that that power is according to the working of his mighty power. The word working there is the word energeo, which we get the word energy from. Energy means moving power. Um, power that is moving in, in, in execution style. I mean, it's being, it's a power that is directed at something. It's not uh, a silent power, but it's moving power, effective power. That's the word, effective power. So he wants us to see what his inherent ability toward us who believe according to his moving power, moving power of his mighty. And the word mighty is the word uh, kratos, which means force. That's where we get democracy. Democracy means the power of the or the force of people. Well, here the word uh, kratos, which means might, force, is only used of God. So God has force. This is a this is a, an inherent ability that moves in in uh, moving power, but it moves with force. And then it moves in power. The last word of verse 19 is power, which is the word ikus. That means dominion power. It's a power that when it manifests, any kind of other power around disappears because it dominates the situation. And this is the power, the ability, the moving power 
the force of God and the dominion power of God, the dominating power of God, that was manifested when the Father raised Jesus, the Son, from the dead. All of His power was manifested in that resurrection. Don't forget that later on, He says that we were made alive with Him. So when Jesus resurrected from the dead, according to the, according to the inheritability, the moving power, the force, the power of force, and the dominating power, he was not just resurrecting his son, he was resurrecting all of us. He was opening the, the fountain, the source of power to resurrect souls from death. And so here, he says that he worked, he moved the power when he resurrected Jesus from the dead and seated him at the right hand of a God in the heavenly places. This is power. He not only resurrected Jesus from the dead, but he resurrected us. He not only uh, raised him from the dead, but he raised us. And then he not only seated him in heavenly places, but he seated us with him in heavenly places. That took the full power of God. One last verse of scripture in Ephesians, in Hebrews 1, 3, it says that he upholds, he upholds all of creation by the word of his power. And that only has to do with inherent ability. It took more power to raise Jesus from the dead than to, than to create all of creation. Praise God that we were resurrected from the dead with this power.